I think as, as mature human beings, there has to be an accounting of what we are doing. And there has to be an accounting spiritually. And I don't see how we can um, honor our own spirituality if we take it away from the earth, because we are not angels. There is an angelic plane, it's a very beautiful plane, and the angels live in a world of light. And you can go there and you can work with the angels. And it's a, a very, very beautiful dimension. Angels have bodies of light, and they only bow down before God. In Sufism it's called the world of divine command. And even in, on the angelic plane there are angels of power and angels of beauty. And in some ways it's much easier just to go there and to be with the angels and to be in that angelic world um, because they just bow down before God, because they are just made of light. But as human beings we have both worlds within us. We have the world of matter, the world of the elements, and we have the angelic world. And we can't dismiss one, we can't dismiss the, the earth in favor of the light just like we can't deny the light in favor of the earth. And to me, a spiritual maturity is being able to live in both worlds. And, you know, when I was 23, I was taken into the world of light. And of course, part of me wanted just to remain there. Because it's, it is just light. You don't have problems. <laughs> you don't have to earn a living. You don't have to pay tax. You don't have to put gas in the car. There you think, and you, you are wherever you are. There is, it is beautiful, and you can be with the angels, you can be with the souls of other human beings there, and yet there is this whole mystery of incarnation, and it's one thing that the Christian myth, the Christian story, the Christian Christianity has taught us. It's about the whole mystery of incarnation. When the divine incarnates, something remarkable happens. And it happens because it is incarnated. And there is a... <laughs> that's why I spoke earlier about, about women and about how, the, to me, the great sadness of feminine consciousness today is they have forgotten the enormous mystery to which they can, in which they can participate, which is bringing the light of a soul into the physical world. And for some reason, that has been veiled from women, that they don't even know, I mean, they don't even know the magnitude of the mystery in which they participate. And this is, as human beings, we are at this place where the two seas come together, where the, where the material, the physical, and the world of light intersect. And... And it's interesting that in Christianity, this is also the mystery of love. The Christ teachings were about the mystery of love that got covered over and forgotten in some places. But it is like in that meeting of the world of light and the world of matter, it is the incarnation of love. It's the poet William Blake who says, and we are put on earth a little space to learn to bear the beams of love. And it's how we hold and live that mystery. And again, it's easy, well, when you reach a certain stage, just to dissolve in the love. But while we are a human being, we also have the limitations of matter, the limitations of ordinary human life. And I really hope there are enough people who are mature enough in their spiritual practice to hold the two together, to hold the worlds together, because it is from bringing the worlds together that something new can be born. Not just by going into the world of light or just staying in the world of matter. Staying in the world of matter, we have science, we have technology, we have Walmart, we have however you like to see it and staying in the world of light, there are beautiful spiritual teachings. But they've been beautiful spiritual teachings for hundreds of years, and they're still not being fully lived. 
And that is the opportunity for each of us to bring the worlds together, to bring the light of our own soul into our daily life, into relationship with the earth, because that is the work that needs to be done now. If there is a, a meaning of the now, it is what is the work that needs to be done now. Sufis are often described as children of the moment, because you respond to the need of the moment. Not some abstract now, but a lived now, a responsible now. And this is what is present in our consciousness. We don't even have to read between the lines anymore. Traditionally, Sufis read between the lines of life to see what is really going on. You don't even need to read between the lines of life to know that the, the sea level is rising, to know that the air is becoming more toxic, to know the species are depleting. And that is the story of now. And, and we are here and we have the light of the divine within us. And how are we going to use that light of the divine in relationship to the need of the moment in relationship to the earth. And then, as you are pointing out, from the mixture of all of those elements, something new can be born, if it is God's will. In some ways it is much easier because, because there is such an obvious need. that we need to include the earth in our prayers. It is not remote. It is... I find it interesting, we... I'm sure if you belong to a spiritual community, you pray. If you pray for people who are suffering, you pray for people who are near death. We often pray for people who, are, who die for the peace of the soul. And these prayers have great healing properties and they are powerful. And if a community prays, it's very powerful. And it's just one step to say, well, then we should pray for the earth because it needs our prayers. And why should we exclude the earth? We pray for a dying friend. Why shouldn't we pray for a dying mother? And then we complete the circle.